Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm getting your question, and, and, and I like it. It's, um, it's an interesting question because there is a, I see a few dynamics in, 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 in that question. First, are we able to exercise these gifts at, at will? The sovereignty of God over these gifts does not end or even begin by our, by our exercising them. You know, as we read in the in the in the in, in, in Hebrews chapter two verse four, that he gives them, he's the one who distributes them at his will, and the will of God is really his um, about his sovereignty. So his sovereignty does not end or begin with our exercising um, um, the gift. He's still sovereign, and he still will determine um, um, the workings of these gifts, even when he has given them, even when he has given them to us. But because this is the faith of the supernatural, we have then to exercise our faith. So if I have faith that I operate in the gift of healing, then my responsibility is to trust God in faith that I can go and lay hands on the sick. And did he not say it? We can go and lay hands on the sick and they will get, and they will get, uh, they will, they will get well. So there is a place of exercising our faith. And I even see this in... Um, in, in, in in the book of Acts, when the apostle Peter and, uh, and John are coming out of the temple and they find this leper and, 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 and he's asking, not leper, he's a, he's a beggar and he's asking for, for um, um, handouts, he's asking for alms and, and they say to him, silver and gold we have none, but, in the name of, but such as we have we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. So what is happening? They have invoked the name of Jesus Christ. My deduction of that is that they are actually recognizing the sovereignty and authority of God over this situation, but they are the ones pronouncing, and in pronouncing, they are exercising their faith. So I think even in exercising our spiritual gift, there is a place of exercising our faith in um, um, in God. Can we exercise them at will? Yes, we can exercise them at will if it is on the basis of our faith that God can do the impossible even in this situation. That I, I want to see God move. I want to exercise my faith and see God move. Can God raise um, Lazarus again? I want to exercise that and see. Uh, test, test and see that the Lord is good. And am I making sense to, to, to in answering your question? So it's Really, where are we exercising our faith? And then do we know that God is sovereign and he's the one who determines whether he will heal or not or raise it from the, from the dead or not? Thank you, Robert, for that question.
Can I get one last question? <laughs> All right, let's start with Manasi. Yes. I was just wondering, can they, um, since that many people here, or many people in different churches are also in the corporate world, can these gifts also be useful there? Or can they also be useful in the here? Like, would, would a spiritual gift help a leader in the corporate world? Yeah. I think the edifying the body has two meanings. The first meaning is we, you know, we edify each other as a, body, as a body of Christ. But I want to push that a little bit and say that when, um, for example, let me use a different example, um, and I hope it will make sense, because evangelism does not happen among us. We evangelize outside, but then the evangelism is the gift of the Spirit, isn't it? Some of us are given the gift of the Spirit so, so that we go out to the lost world and share with them the gospel, all right? And they come. So what has happened there? Um, we have exercised the gift outside of the body, but the body has been edified, all right? When we are salt and light to the world, what happens? The body of Christ, the message of Christ is believed. The body of Christ is edified in that process. So I think um, I want to say, yes, there is a place of us edifying one another, but there is a place of us pushing ourselves and exercising this gift, especially those that can be exercised beyond the four walls of our, of our, of our, of our gathering like this. Yeah. Yes, Mose. Um, yes. 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 Mm. Well, <laughs> you want to add? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, the, the answer to your question is yes, the answer to your question is no. Um, because as you, as you read scripture, you will see Paul is even suggesting the hand is the hand and the eye is the eye. The problem here is that the, uh, the hand is desiring to be the eye. So, for, so, so, so because we have glorified certain gifts and elevate them, elevated them, we tend to think that everyone should have them. And, and, and the tragedy, even for the church, is that we go beyond and start faking because we want to be seen as, as, as spiritual. The thing is, not everyone will receive the, gifts, the gift of tongues. I, for example, don't have the gift of tongues, but I desire to have the gift of tongues. You were here in the first service last week, I said, I desire to have this gift, and when I get it, even for food, my dear, even for food, I will pray in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, and maybe that's why God has withheld it because uh, he's designing my motives to use it but, he, you know, but I, know, I know people in this congregation who are um, gifted to, 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 to speak in tongues who have the gift, the gift of tongues yeah. and again um, this is really happening in the Corinthians church that would say, now let's all speak in tongues, and everyone would start speaking in tongues, and everyone would be seen as being very, very, very spiritual and speaking the tongues of angels as Paul is, is um, rebuking them in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. But that's confusion in the body of Christ. That's why Paul is, is saying, actually, uh, let there be tongues, but also interpretation. And I, what, is, what, I, what I said last week, and I still believe it, believe it, is God is sovereign over these gifts. He's the one who will appoint the interpreter, and he's the one who will appoint the one who speaks um, in tongues. But the truth is, not all of us will receive that gift.
Yeah, but we should desire to have, yeah, to have gifts, um, but then check our motives as we do that. Yes, Flo? The boy who? Was demon possessed, yes. yes. Yeah, but Jesus was really talking about their spiritual habits um, and, 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 you know, growing in, 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 in spiritual, spiritual maturity. But the list we have read of 21 gifts, there seems to be a suggestion that this list is not exhaustive. There could be gifts that were not captured um, in the canonization of the New Testament so that there are things like the gift of deliverance, that some people exercise that is not captured. There is a gift of intercession, for example, that may not have been captured in the, in the gift of the Spirit. But I don't want you to think about that because I don't want, you, I don't want to, con, to, con, to confuse you. But for praying and fasting, um, that's, that's how that you respond to. If you desire a gift, then express that desire in prayer and ask God to, to give it to you. Yeah. Yes, uh, Godric. Yes. Which ones are, which ones are the greater? Yeah. So the First Corinthians twelve thirteen. Uh, 12 verse uh, 31 says, desire the greater gifts and yet I'll show you a more excellent way. Then he goes on to write 1 Corinthians 13. Actually, <laughs> the Bible as it is is not written in, 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 verse, in chapters. It's, it's, a, it's a whole flow. So 1 Corinthians, the end of 1 Corinthians 12, where our 1 Corinthians 13 begins, is actually a continuation of the thought he has begun in the last verse of, of chapter 12. So the, the, those most excellent and greater gifts he's talking about is what he started to introduce us to in 1 Corinthians 13. And he has begun by introducing us to love. That is the greater gift that every believer should, should have. We should have the gift of love and loving one another. But then he goes on to talk to us about faith and hope because those are the things that, 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 uh, that, 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 that please God. All right? Then... Um, whether our desire can influence um, um, God, then he, he would not be God. Why would we need him? Why would we need him to be, to be God, um, to just, you know, just rubber stamp what, what we need? That what we said, we can desire, and we ought to pray by faith that he would give us these gifts, but our desiring of these gifts do not in any way negate or dilute his sovereignty. He is still sovereign over the gifts and he is still sovereign over the distribution of, 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 of the gifts. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, Jerry, last question, please. I want to do something a little bit uh, dangerous. I, want, I, I don't want to be heretic. Um, but you will see in those gifts, there seems to be a suggestion of categories. So there is some that are just miraculous. 
like the gift of tongues or the gift of healings. Those are just miraculous in themselves. And this is what again is happening in the, in the Corinthians. They have categorized these gifts and, and say these are better than, than others, okay? And so <laughs> the most tangible ones that you know, you either have it or you don't, like the gift of tongues, you either have it or you don't, okay? So you can't exercise it if you don't have it. Then um, those are called the miraculous, miraculous gifts or, or the gifts of revel revelation or revelatory gifts. And then there are the gifts that are called the serving gifts, okay? So the serving gifts, the one way to grow in them, and, and, and I am not in any way suggesting that there is a category of gifts. They're just one, but you know, just putting, putting a way to help us um, know whether we have no, we have them or not, or exercise them. The way to grow a gift or get a gift in that category of serving gifts like helping, uh, faith, and apostle is to exercise, to be in practice, to put yourself in places where you serve. You know, to put your place in uh, self in places where you are generous. You know, um, um, to put your place yourself in places where you exercise that gift. So, because practice and exercising in faith is what perfects perfects um, perfects this gift. Now, the gifts of um, miracles and working miracles and healing and thing. If you don't have it. You don't have it, and you, it's, that's very evident. So pray for it. Pray that God would give you um, the gift of, 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 of prophecy or the gift of, of healing or the gift of um, working, working miracles. But these other ones, you know, j just put yourself in service. Help people. Um, intercede for people. Does that answer your question? All right. Let's rise to our feet. Again, there's no category of gifts because then I don't want us to, to be caught up in categorizing them and say this is better, this is a better category than, an, than this one. Is there one, but there are those that even in common sense are mi miracles, right? They are, they are miraculous and then there are those that are for j just serving and edifying one another. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for the gift of yourself and the gift of your presence. That as we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, we really are talking about the presence of God with us. The presence of God that is made manifest in the community of believers. And even when we go out to serve humanity. And I want to thank you for every gift, known or unknown, that is inside every one of us. I want to thank you, Lord. And I pray that in your power and in your love, you would cause us, Lord, to come alive in exercising these gifts for your glory. To exercise them, Lord, in ways that that honor your name and not bring disrepute and disrespect and dishonor to the house and body of Christ. So help us, Lord. Help us to be faithful in stewarding what you have given us. Even those, one who have, those ones of us who have gifts that we know we have, cause us to be humble about them, but also cause us to be faithful in using them and producing much fruit for the sake of the glory of your name. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for where we have quenched your spirit by treating prophecies with contempt, by being so contemptuous about gifts such as tongues. Forgive us for where we have been so lazy to exercise our faith in the areas of the gifts of healing and working of miracles. And I pray, my Father, that you would help us to step out. You have not given us a, a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So help us to come out in power and exercise this gift. Help us, Lord, to not be caught up in, in being right 
and being proper and being civilized and being logical. Help us, Lord, to lose ourselves in you that you would be glorified in us. Help us to diminish, to diminish, Lord, that you may be seen and the works of God, the mighty works of God, the wondrous deeds of God would be seen through us. Lord, I, I, I just desire to pray like David and say that even when we are old and gray, do not forsake us until we declare your power through the works of your mighty hand, until we declare your power to the next generation and your mighty works to those who are to come. So help us to be bold. Help us to be bold, to be unafraid, and to be unashamed. And Lord, in exercising these gifts, may you be glorified. May you be glorified in all things. So child of God, won't you receive the blessings of God now? He has blessed you and soaked you in his anointing. He has caused that his very presence would be with you and he has filled you with his spirit. God himself is with you. He has hemmed you and etched you in that no harm of the enemy would come to you. He is your protector. He's the one who cares for you and he's the one who provides for you. Won't you trust him for everything? Won't you trust him even for that which now seems impossible? Trust him and trust that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you may ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power of God that is at work in you. As you go into the week, remember as we sang in the morning, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And he has given you power to tread on snakes and scorpions. What is it that man can do to harm you? Do not be afraid, but stand firm on the strength and victory that you have in him. I pray that you would rest in his love, that your heart and mind would rest in the love of God, and the love that he has for you. Thrive where he has planted you. Be fruitful where he has planted you. Produce much fruit in your speech, in your conduct, in everything that you do. Produce much fruit for his glory. And let your testimony spark conviction in the hearts of men. You're blessed in your going out and in your coming in, in the country and in the city. You're blessed to be fruitful. The work of your hand is blessed. The water you drink and the food you eat is blessed to the honor and glory of God, the Father who created you, God the Son who redeemed you, and God the Holy Spirit who gives you power, wisdom, and courage to overcome the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you in good health. We'll see you again. Thank you for your patience. God bless you.